Item number SCP-2490 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures All Foundation personnel are to be informed of SCP-2490's properties and are encouraged to inform their Site Director if they suspect pursuit by SCP-2490. Mobile Task Force Alpha-5 Honor Guard is to monitor any compromised personnel at all times and incapacitate SCP-2490 if possible. Mobile Task Force Psi-7 Home Improvement is currently tracking down anonymous objects believed to have been stolen by SCP-2490. Personnel compromised by SCP-2490 are to be placed on indefinite paid leave and their security clearance is to be immediately revoked. Any anonymous object that the compromised personnel worked with should be moved to secondary classified locations at the discretion of the site director. If the object cannot be moved, then all security measures, codes, guard schedules, module perimeter defenses mounted are to be modified immediately, with an emphasis on constant in-person surveillance. Employees attacked by SCP-2490 should be transferred to Site-44A, Foundation Center for Neurological Disease. Description SCP-2490 refers to a modified human being, believed to be Chaos Insurgency Special Operative Alpha-19, that has docked at least Beep Foundation employees since 19 Beep. SCP-2490's head is composed of a single oblong beige capsule in which two eyes have been painted and no other facial features are present. Its body consists of multiple white jointed segments. SCP-2490 possesses claws that appear to be grafted to its hand parts. Based on target testimony, however, most observers perceive it as an ordinary human being. SCP-2490 displays behavior consistent with game stalkers, identifying a person or multiple persons and methodically stalking them, usually through urban and rural areas. The target is or will become immune to the mechanism that SCP-2490 uses to disguise itself, but SCP-2490 makes no attempt to disguise its behavior if spotted. Targets have often reported seeing normal persons transform into SCP-2490 before it begins pursuit. SCP-2490 will pursue the target for anywhere between several hours and several months, often showing itself to the target from a range before fleeing. As a result of this behavior, Targets usually express lack of sleep, extreme paranoia, introversion, and the phobia of mannequins. Targets uniformly report SCP-2490 either moving towards them without moving its legs, with its arms outstretched, or sculling in a manner akin to the crab. SCP-2490 appears to have a type of short-range teleportation, or though another hypothesis is that there are multiple instances of SCP-2490. One instance, SCP-2490's target locked it in the closet, then turned around to see SCP-2490 emerging from a nearby bathroom. Eventually, targets found unconscious with puncture marks in their skull. MRI scanning reveals that brain tissue from the cerebellum, hippocampus, cerebral cortex, and random sections of the frontal parietal and temporal lobes have been removed and replaced with a fluid similar to SCP beeps secretions. Following an attack, a random SCP that the target previously worked with will disappear. How the object is removed is unknown, as no security measures are activated and no witnesses are ever present. Surveillance footage shows no abnormalities besides a consistent 0.5 second period of static, during which the object disappears. Attempts to watch anonymous objects in person result in brief periods of vision failure, usually through malfunctioning lights, human error, or optical instruction failure, during which the object disappears. 
Interview with Dr. Feldman. Dr. Arnold Feldman was the seventh foundation employee sued by SCP-2490. This interview is taken shortly before full compromise. Good morning, Dr. Feldman. Yes, yes, good, good morning. Doctor, we'd like to collect some information from you on the SCP that has been pursuing you. What do you want? What do you want to know about it? What do you know about SCP-2490? Nothing. I know it's an SCP. I know it can teleport. I know it terrorizes Foundation employees. I know it does something to your head. I know it ruined my marriage. That's it. When you first encountered SCP-2490, it was... It was about six months ago. I was going to pick up my daughter from school. She was being released for the summer. While I was walking to school... I tripped by this alleyway. Oh, I was getting up. I saw it. It was hiding in the alley, and as soon as it saw me see it, it ran. At, at first, you know, I didn't understand what I saw, you know. So I, I passed it off as a trick of the smog. So much smog in the city, you can't see past past your own two feet, you know. But I couldn't get it out of my head. That face and the way... The way it was staring at me, like, I don't, it was just two eyes and nothing else. Just two blue eyes staring at me. Just those eyes. When do you next see SCP-2490? It was, it was, it was about a week later, I think. I was on my way to Site-33 and heard a rustling sound. It was quiet, almost unnoticeable. And then I saw it again, scuttling down the road like a crab. So I saw this thing, like a mannequin made of, I don't know, gigantic plastic pills. It was on its back and running on its arms and legs. And it's scuttling. It was this horrid rattling noise that got quieter as it moved around the corner. I just couldn't believe what I saw. I assume it had to be hallucinations because of because of this project I was working on. I don't think I'm allowed to tell you anything about that, sorry. That's all right. Please continue discussing your experiences with SCP-2490. I just kept seeing it. Not all the time, mind you. That's enough to make sure that as soon as I put it out of my mind, I'd see it again. Walking around the corner, Scuttling into buildings, running over rooftops, vanishing into crowds. Nobody knows this damn thing. I was still on the project, so I wasn't worried. But then it started getting closer and closer. And its arms were... They were outstretched. These freaking plastic claws, reaching for me, like it was running a marathon. And I realized there was something off about it. It was moving towards me all the damn time, but it never moved its freaking legs. But it wasn't floating. It was literally... <sighs> I stopped working on a project, and that's where it got worse. At worst, it was little things. Sounds behind me, thumping noises, squeaks, humming, things moving, just a little bit, maybe a few centimeters... This feeling every time was in even a bit of darkness, like something was staring at me. I started seeing flashes of it out of the corner of my eye. One night, one night, see, I stared out the window and I saw it, barely lit by an Ibis garage light, flying in the freaking yard for running off into the woods, like it saw me see it. I went over the next day, I saw these tracks in the snow. Just these fat round circles. Like something on a pod or a pogo stick or something. No animal I've heard of has fat circles for feet. I work on a computer the next night and I hear noises. Thumping noises. Like there's something on the roof and I look at those, those little stained windows on the roof. Like a sunroof for a house. I look at those, and his face is pressed up against the glass, me staring at it, its eyes greasing against the window. 
boring into my goddamn soul before it just grims off. Around this time, you alerted the Foundation to SCP-2490, correct? Yes, around then, I got yelled at by my supervisor, then got some security measures and an MTF guard. Security measures, ha! <sighs> <sighs> right around the time the family got back from vacation, it got worse. I got sleeping pills just so I could do with other nightlight. Couldn't let them know what was wrong. Then it, it ramped up. I started seeing it in my peripheral vision. Turn the corner, bam, it's there. Walk into a room, bam, it's walking out another door. It was random, like one week, it won't be here, and the next day I wake up and BAM! It's watching out of my bloody bedroom! Do you know what's that? Do you know what it does to a man? That security system you set up to attack is absolutely jack crap! Your damn MTF saw nothing! I'm the only one who sees it! Not the security system or those buffoons in uniform! Barley and Danny know it's on one edge! And what do I tell them? Sorry, I'm just being hunted by a demonic mannequin. <sighs> Don't go! You leave, and it's just me and it! What night, see? I'm brushing my teeth. I was on edge. But I hadn't seen it in a few days. Then, as I'm staring into the mirror, I see it. Its head, just rising out of the bathtub. There's not even enough room to lie down in that tub. But this thing was rising out of the bathtub like it was growing. Two beady little eyes and a fat belt pale of a head. I rubbed them out and there was nothing there except a thumping sound, like somebody walked out of their bathroom. So I went out and brought an axe. The next day, I'm working in project report and hear a buzzing noise. I look to my left. It was just standing there, watching me with these beady blue eyes and these horrible claws and arms collapsed together. And I blink, and it's gone. Three days ago, I woke up in the middle of the night to get a drink and grab that axe. As I pass my daughter's room, I hear something moving around. Do you know what I saw when I opened the door? SCP-2490, I pursue. Nothing! Just Danny murmuring in her sleep. Nothing there. So I turn around, and guess what? It's right at the end of the hall. I pissed myself, you understand? I turn around, and was face to face with that thing. And then it slips into my bedroom. I... I charge into the bedroom with the axe, and there was nothing there except my wife, awake and staring at me with an axe in my hands. The next day... The next day... The body took my daughter. They went to live with her parents. What can I do? I can't go after them. Whatever it does, too. Have you seen SCP-2490 since then? Yes. Following me on the way here. I lost it about a mile back. Thank you, Dr. Veltman. Dr. Kushamurthy will be here shortly. Wait, I'm not done. There's something else about it. I've been noticing something else about it. Sometimes it's... Sometimes it's more than usual. Like, sometimes only two-thirds as large as it usually is. I think there's more. At this point, the lights in the interview room cut out for approximately 3.5 seconds. The interviewer reported hearing a shuffling sound and then a brief gasp before the lights turned back on. At which point, Dr. Veltman was found unconscious on the ground apparently victim to SCP-2490. Memetic agent neutralized. Please enter lock-in information. Lock-in confirmed. The following document was acquired from a GOC database around the events of Redacted. Threat ID KTE-4622 Velveteen Hunting Mannequin Authorized response level 4. Severe threat. Description. Animate plastic mannequin. Stalks and hunts GOC operatives for a random period of time, causing psychological trauma before attacking and removing brain matter in an unknown fashion. Appears of a form of psychic camouflage similar to KTE 
972 Nengue Corona, instantaneous teleportation abilities. Following an attack, smaller animate mannequins that resemble the object will infiltrate GOC bases and steal other anonymous objects present on site. Security measures are not tripped, and witnesses report seeing qualified personnel removing the stolen objects with proper identification and passes. Security cameras are able to catch the objects on recorded footage, though live footage does not show the objects. The primary objective is unknown. Rules of engagement! All GOC operatives, all GOC operatives have been informed of the object's properties and are encouraged to inform, and are encouraged to inform Strike Team 2374 Beetlejuice if they suspect pursuit by the object. Strike Team Beetlejuice has been equipped with incineration weapons and high moral asset sprayers. All GOC bases have been upgraded with lane-based security measures. General security protocols for personnel and bases and termination protocols for anomalous objects have been updated to prevent compromise by KTE 4622. History First sighted near Belabino Nuclear Power Plant in northern Russia by GOC Operative Chaplin. Following a joint termination operation with GRU Division P of LTE-1723 Scarlet Green Mantle in 1965, several more agents were stalked and harassed by the object throughout Europe for the next several years. In 1981, following the disappearance of Agent Pinocchio, several GOC bases were infiltrated by animate mannequins resembling an object, which stole various other anomalous objects scheduled for termination. All witnesses reported seeing qualified personnel take the object, stating that they provided proper clearance. Only standard checks of security footage caught these discrepancies. As of 1990, no less than 75 GOC personnel and 45 anonymous objects have been compromised by the objects. Operatives within the Foundation report affiliation with the group the Chaos Insurgency. The following document was acquired one late on the Chaos Insurgency base of operations. Data redacted per O5 command. Certain information has been redacted. Delta command eyes only. The serial catalog number SC59 66 Document type Step Compilation Dates received June 4th, 1959 through November 28th, 1968 Operation Status Open Forward We know not from whence it came, only that its assault is relentless. Friend to neither beast nor man. The mannequin and his children draw ever closer. It feeds on our men and his children on our processions. Hiding in the shadows will not deter them. So let us hide in plain sight. When the time comes, we of the insurgency will pass this plague on to our foes as it was passed on to us. Hereafter, we of Delta Command document the steps of the plan as transcribed by the engineer of the chaos insurgency. 1. Step 59, 471. On September 11th, the mannequin will target the Gamma class personnel redacted in Base 24. Tell all other personnel in the base that he has been infected by an anomalous pathogen and is being kept on for study. And the only way to stay clean is to ignore his talk of being stalked. 2. Step 60, 756. Open the Golden Gateway. Currently housed in base 13 and allow the creatures that exit to escape. Ensure that the alpha class personnel redacted are allowed to escape, but modify their weaker microchips so that they are directed to any gamma class foundation or GOC modes. Number three, step 60, 034. The mannequin's progeny were assault base 24 on November 6. Evacuate all objects except Heavenly Tuskuro and the all-seeing eye. Those are useless at this point anyway. Evacuate all gamma personnel. Leave an armed contingency of beta class security personnel and alpha class standard personnel to defend the base from the botany. 4. Step 63. All 34. Have the shifting child delivered to the Russian liaison 
on October 17th, bring its controlling sash and a fake sash. Gift of rushing the fake sash and make sure that the delivering personnel leave immediately following payment. 5. Step 68. 666. The beta class personnel redacted plans to defect. Have two gamma class personnel discuss the mannequin to hear her, pretending that it is an alpha class personnel modified with anonymous objects. The gamma class personnel are not to mention the protony.